Shalom. Uh, this is uh, part two to uh, <clears throat> the video, uh, brother shot deliver brother, in which uh, the first one got in, the first part got interrupted. I uh, got a phone call I had to take, but um, <clears throat> you know, just gonna continue through the spirit uh, to Ezekiel the uh, ninth chapter, and I was at the fourth verse, and this is concerning us reaching out to the elect of the nation of Israel. But to the others, you know, the Lord has forsaken the two thirds of Israel. Man. You know, the Lord is no longer dealing with the nation of Israel as a whole. Just for reasons like this, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the, uh, the first part of the video. You know how you have a person to deliver up another, uh, you know, a person uh, delivering up the prophets to death. Which, like I mentioned before, is no different. You know, it's no different uh, how it was done back then to the prophets. And, uh, you know, the same thing is being done today. All right. So this is uh, Ezekiel, the ninth chapter again is at the fourth verse. It says, And the Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Shai, said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of them. See? So we are to set that mark, like I mentioned at the, uh, the last part of the first, or the last uh, few seconds or few minutes of the first part of the video, which I spoke about the mark, which was setting upon the elect of the nation of Israel. That's a mark of exemption. All right, I believe that the Hebrew word for mark there is uh, Thorah. All right, which means, a, once again, it means a mark of exemption. And what the exemption is, is is exemption from judgment, which is the judgment is to is the destruction of Babylon the Great, which is America, and also as well the inhabitants that are living here comfortably here in, in America and they want this place to continue to go on. And this is the judgment in which the ones who wants to keep this place going, this is what the Lord is commanding his servants to do. And guess what? It's gonna get get to a point to where the servants of the Lord the prophets are going to be the hunters all right and the Lord is going to allow the hunters to go out and to do this this is at verse 6 it's uh, actually verse 5 it's like you it says and, and to the others he said in mine hearing go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye pity slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin in my sanctuary then they began at the ancient men which were before the house that's right so to the others in his hearing right go through the midst of the city and smite all right and and don't have pity there's a reason why the lord doesn't want us to have pity to two-thirds of our people because they haven't shown mercy to the prophets. They haven't shown mercy to the men of the Lord. They haven't shown mercy to Yahweh Shai. All right? The same ones that says crucify Yahweh Shai and release Bar uh, 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 what's his name? Barabbas. So that's why the Lord said not to have pity when you smite them. All right? No matter how old or how young. Because the Lord wants this done, man. All right? And he's going to allow it to happen. Okay? Now, we'll move on from there. I'm going to go back to the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. It's like you're going to be something here. Uh, this is the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter again. This is at, uh, the 19th verse. Says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. See? So that's why when you brought before uh, the governors, you know, the court systems, you know, take no, take no thought what you're going to say beforehand because the Lord is going to allow the spirit to move you to speak in the way that he wants you to speak. All right. 
Now, that can be applied to the day. You know, uh, you just got to use uh, prudence to uh, navigate the, the discourse in which that's what you see, um, especially with Paul. All right, because Paul uh, had a discourse with, um, I'm trying to remember the, the person's name, it escapes me right now, you know, Slakia. But, um, you know, he had a discourse between uh, the Romans and, uh, you know, uh, and one of them, and I'm, like I mentioned before, you know, Slakia, you know, name escapes me right now. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and grab it for the notification's sake. Agrippa, it's like, yeah, um, this is uh, Acts the 26th chapter, and this is, um, start at 26th verse, it says, for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner, verse 27, it says, King Agrippa, Believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Verse 28, it says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. See? And the reason why King Agrippa said that is because Paul was speaking so smoothly, you know, and with prudence that he almost persuaded Agrippa, King Agrippa, to be a Christian. But we already know Agrippa or King Agrippa was actually an Edomite you know so there's no way that he could uh, come into this thing man or be a follower of Yahweh Shai alright and that's the same thing that we do especially when we uh, encounter you know the, the powers that be modern day uh, centurions which known as the day as police officers you know we uh, just tell them hey you know we teaching you know this and that and, and blase blase and that's it you know that's all you got to do you know you ain't got to be all militant and stuff like that that's what these other camps be doing man all right that's why it's going to be a lot of uh i don't want to say back and forth but it's going to be uh, a lot of conflict if i can use that word it's going to be a lot of conflict between um you know these israelite groups these other israelite groups and um the uh, police forces man all right the powers that be So uh, I'm going to go back to Matthew's 10th chapter. And um, it's like I lost my place. Right, I'm at verse uh, 20. have martial law in full swing that's when you're going to have a lot of this happening you're going to have a lot of, of people that you know that was your family members your, your uh, you know your your blood brothers your your, your fathers or your mothers you might have uh, somebody that you you know knew in the world or somebody that you work with and uh they live they deliver you up to be uh slaughtered they deliver you up to be to be uh destroyed to be sent and processed in the court systems. All right. Verse 22, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, the same, it's like it, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. 
All right. So that's why we're hated of our men for the name of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. So if you're not hated, then you're doing something wrong, man. All right. Because you you're gonna meet that um you're gonna meet opposing forces on the other side to come against you. You know, there's no avoiding that, man. Why? Because this place, America, is completely adverse to the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yon Shai. So, of course, you're going to meet some sort of opposition that's going to come against you. All right. Of course, you're going to meet that hatred that is uh, spewing out of these people, man, towards Yahweh Bashem Yon Shai. Because it's not you that they hate. They hate Yahweh Bashem Yon Shai. All right. So that's why they're going to come at us. Because we come in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yon Shai. I believe that Apostle El Gabar went into um, a video, a very edifying video uh, called. Um, I'm trying to remember, trying to remember uh, the, the title of the video, but he went into um, it's not projection and it's not image. I'm trying to think of it, man. It's like you, it's like you, I can, um, yeah, it escapes me right now. But you know, the, the Apostle Elder Gabar did a beautiful video on it, um, in which he was speaking about Apostle Elder Tahar. And how he uh, said that when Apostle Tahar was uh, was speaking, you know, he saw um, he, he was saying he said that uh, that was Yahweh Shai. So when we speak, that's Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay, that's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai speaking. So that's why uh, in a few verses up it says that. Um, it's not you that speaketh, but the Father which is in heaven. All right. Now, uh, verse uh, twenty-three says, "But when they, but when they uh, persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come." All right. Verse uh, twenty-four. It says, "The disciple is not above his master." Nor the servant above his lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, right, which they basically call him a devil, how much more shall they call them of their house of the household? It's like I'm gonna read it again. It says, um, if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Right. So if they call him a devil, they're going to call us devils, man. All right. You know, that's pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it on that. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, just end it off on, on these few precepts that I had left. Um, once again, Salakia, you know, for uh, the interruption on the first part of the video. Like I said before, I had an uh, incoming call that I had to take. But the Lord's word was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. And, you know, just to reiterate that, you know, it's going to come to a point in time where we're going to be persecuted at an all time high. All right. They're going to try to come at us. They're going to try to. to uh, Throw us in concentration camps, you know, try to <clears throat> put us to death, you know, all manner of things, man. Just for the sake of Yahweh Bashem Yon Shai, you know, even though we're out there speaking this word and this truth, but yet they want to kill us for it, all right? And that lets you know that the truth hurts, the truth cuts deep, man. Because when you tell somebody about themselves or you tell somebody what's, what's what, you know, they feel some type of way about it. All right, that's that's a uh, a reaction to someone, and and really to be honest with you, that's a reaction to somebody that's a feminine. All right, and feminine and weak, because you can't take re because the, you know two thirds of our people can't take rebuke. Whenever you rebuke them on something, they they think that you're wrong for telling them what they're doing wrong. But like I mentioned before, man, the Lord got their he pulled their card, man. So you know that's it, man. It's a wrap for uh, two thirds of our people. 
and we'll just see him on the other side, man. So again, I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim, Rechakodash, and also double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well to this very day. And also, Shalom, one peace of safety and salutations to the hopeful elect that is laboring in his labor of love, giving you due diligence to make your calling and election sure in faith, in truth, in sincerity, and all charity. And with that, we'll go to Shalom.